Aloha lovelies and welcome to Inspire Out Loud where we're exploring ways to creating a thriving world for all sentience. So today we're talking about sex. This most sacred of energies has been inverted and weaponized against us for as long as I can imagine. I see it playing out in many extremes from hedonistic addiction and gender confusion to complete suppression and the inability to be proactive in life. So whether it shows up as over-sexualization or under-sexualization, in my opinion, they both point to a severe disconnection from ourselves, which I believe stems from both personal and collective trauma. So today I'm very happy to be chatting about how to release trauma from our most sacred feminine parts. And I'm very happy to be chatting with Sophia Shakina. She is an embodiment coach and tantric therapist who runs one-on-one coaching, group workshops and retreats. And if you're a man, please don't go away because there will be some very beneficial insights for you here too. So welcome, Sophia. How are you? Thank you, Tony. I'm really good. I'm really, really happy we're sitting here having this chat. So for people that haven't met you yet, perhaps you could just share um, a brief introduction of you, of yourself. Who are you and what are you bringing into the world? Yes, my name is Sophia. Uh, at the moment, I'm based in the Netherlands and I, um, in my work, I offer therapeutic tantric bodywork sessions and pelvic release. So they're both uh, aiming to to free the body and to release any stored traumas and stress and emotions. Uh, I also run group workshops and retreats in Egypt. Um, yeah, so that's, Beautiful. that's what I bring in the world at the moment. Beautiful. And and so let's look at the why. Like when when we see the, I've already just touched on, you know, what it looks like in the world to have our sexuality and our relationship to our bodies and selves like really shut down. So what do you see um, in the people around you and in yourself of how that actually plays out? Like how does that affect our day-to-day lives? One of the most common things that I see uh, in people and that I can also notice at times in myself is the impact of the disconnection to our bodies in general. So how much, uh, especially in the West, we live in societies where we mostly live over here, up here in the head. And there is very often a complete disconnection to the body and to what we're actually feeling. And also most people just haven't learned about that our bodies have their own wisdom and also their own memory. And so we can tap into the wisdom of the body and we can also be influenced by the memories that are stored within the cellular memory of the body. Um, and how that impacts us in our decision making and how we feel, how we think, how we act in the world. Um, so, yeah, very often when I see when there is that disconnect, then we are subconsciously moving or acting or feeling in certain ways that, you know, are, are being run by, by certain programs that we sometimes don't even have an awareness of, but they're stored in the body. Yeah, the subconscious programs are, are quite strong, aren't they? Like, And I noticed in myself that, um, you know, even the ability to, to tap into the creative energy and to have the energy to actually, you know, get projects moving, get life moving. I guess it's that thing that the sexual energy isn't just about sex. It's, a, you know, it's the life force that really fuels all of us and our ability to step into the world and so that's why, you know, to me, I'm so excited about the work that, that you're doing because it really can affect us in so many different levels. Mm-hmm. So, what, so what kind of changes do, do you see in people that come to do the work with you? What really very much what you just said is the understanding or uh, very often for people it's a remembering um, of um, the power of this energy and the sacredness of this energy and as you say like the sexual energy it's not just about sex it's not just about the energy that that is generated in that act but it's um, very much seen especially in the ancient traditions like Taoism, 
Tantra, like, and also other ancient traditions, they all knew and they all were teaching how to use this energy as your life force. So when this energy is generated, it starts like the source of it is in your pelvis. But when you learn certain ways through movement, through breath, through visualization, there are many practices to learn to move this energy up through your body. And then it becomes your life force energy, like you say, the creation force. And very often, yeah, when people come and uh, if I work with them in a session or in, in mentorships, it's it's in a way, it's a deep remembering of something that is inherently, it's it's our nature. and. Yeah, I, I can see that in, in, in the people that it's like, it's almost like a homecoming. It's like this, we know this energy somewhere deep down and we know the power of it. And when, when we are being brought back in touch with it, it's, you're back in your, in your center, you're back in your, in your power, in your nature. It very much brings you into the body because there is no other way to feel this energy than being in the body. We can't feel it if we think about it or speak about it. It's like it's something that's experienced in the body. So you can already see a shift when someone drops into the body. There's like the nervous system becomes more calm. There's a grounding. There's a certain safety and yeah, a centeredness, which of course also doesn't take away that when a person drops into the body, there is we shift into the feeling. And so it can also be that that a lot of feelings can come up and maybe also emotions or memories or things that are there stored in the body from the past. But that, in my opinion, is a beautiful thing because it was there all along. It was stored there and you drop into the body and, and you get in touch with what's there. And in these sessions, for example, the, it's about offering a safe space to to feel what is there in the body and to allow it to come up and to be transmuted so that the body becomes more open, lighter, mm. and the energy can flow more freely. That's what it's about. It's about moving that energy through the body and opening the pathways, opening the places in the body where something was stuck that was kind of obstructing that energy. And now it's being opened. And I, so I, from, from what you're saying and from what I've, yeah, kind of experienced or explored, it's kind of the difference between sex as being that what can become quite an addictive sort of act of disconnection of just wanting to distract one's self through it, we, you know, in a similar addiction to any kind of drug or something like that versus actually using it to not escape the self but to actually become in contact with the self it's almost mm. like you know having a nourishing meal versus just eating junk food as an entertainment it's you know mm. really tuning into what the whole system is actually needing and not using it to escape anything as you were um, you mentioned the emotion so yeah I as with any connection to self some of the difficult kind of chewy bits are going to come up so so for people that sort of might be a bit afraid of what can come up and for me even just, um, you know, I read the the beautiful email that you sent uh, regarding the offerings that we'll touch on shortly, uh, but even just reading it, it actually brought up a lot of triggers for me. Like I've, I know that I still have a lot of, you know, work to do in that kind of area. So um, is there any uh, protocols or practices in place to help people get through, you know, the more difficult, challenging uh, parts of themselves that they might experience? Mm, beautiful question and, and reflection. What, what really um, has been always part of my journey and still always is, is, is building that connection to my body. So any types of practices that I know help me to shift into the body and into a feeling state there are a lot of practices like breath work or dance movements like intuitive intuitive types of movement where you where you not necessarily following a strict like pattern of movement but more um, moving the body intuitively being in nature is always an ally for me and I think it's also about a mind shift 
of like learning to accept that these parts of us are there as well and learning to become a space for that within yourself. What I mean with that is learning to have a certain acceptance of all the parts of you that are uh, alive in each moment without always, we're so used to, I think also in our society to, to always have to feel good and things have to go well. And, and so when something comes up and it doesn't feel so good, we immediately want to go to, um, to the fixing of it. But very often these parts that come up from the deep within us, they don't need fixing. They just need a loving place to be held because they very often come from an experience when we were very young, where we, for whatever reason, didn't receive the love or the support or the safety that we needed in that place. And so that's something that we can keep having, repeating as a pattern or a feeling. And so actually all that it often needs is that place safe place where it can just be witnessed and loved without having to change. And that's, I think, a very big journey to learn that. And for me, what also very much has been needed is having the support of others for that, to learn that and to find that bedding within myself. Um, it has helped me so much to, to, you know, have therapy sessions myself or coaches or mentors or programs that have helped me to yeah to find that that bedding within myself to hold myself with all the parts of me and sometimes I still you know I I have that I have a much more bedding now within me but sometimes I still really reach out and have learned to ask for help to be supported in certain parts that are very um maybe challenging or yeah that, that just it's, it's sometimes also learning that we don't need to do everything alone, no? <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's so important that, and, you know, as, as space holders for other people, it doesn't mean that we're healed and we're fabulous and, like, everything's <laughs> peachy and rosy, you know, like, it, you know, the healing is a constant process, absolutely. But that um, point you made of just giving things space and giving things time, I think it's maybe the simplest but also the most difficult to do, but then, you know, once you give presence to those bits that feel, you know, maybe painful or uncomfortable and just give them your, your just pure loving attention without forcing them to go away, somehow just holding that energy helps them to kind of resolve themselves anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's so simple <laughs> if we just get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And simple doesn't mean easy. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> it's yeah. often like that. It's the most simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. And and like you say, and, and being able to hold that space uh, in that loving space. Yeah. The tools that um, I've learned along the way, I'm really grateful for because they really help me. Like if something arises and it feels really intense and I know I can just hold the space for it, but it really helps me that I have some breathing practice that helps me to just take deep breath and breathe, breathe through it or like move my body when I feel like there is a lot of like tension rising in my body. So, yeah, I, I do really feel that that having a toolbox uh, really helps. Yeah. And that's something you build up over time. No. Yeah, absolutely. With the help of, of all our kindred spirits, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. We're always yeah, learning yeah. from each other. That's so, actually one thing I would also say is is really helpful to be to surround yourself with people that are, you know, like minded or you feel like you can really share yourself with. And um, again, I think that's a part of like learning to not do it all alone is is having people around you you can share with or be inspired by. Um, yeah, definitely yeah. helps. We don't have to have all the answers, and we don't have to pretend to be strong all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can you imagine can you imagine what the world would be like if if everybody like if all of us just went through and just shone light on our own sex, sexual traumas and resolved them as much as is, is humanly possible if we could do that how how could you see that changing the way that we function in the world and function with each other <laughs> I love this question I was thinking <laughs> about this a lot as well why why do I believe so much in this work? Uh, for me, I I came to the understanding in myself that our sexuality is our nature. 
it's where we come from. Like we can't deny it. And it's, it's part of our nature. And um, just the fact that we're so disconnected from it in our world for me is, is, is linked to how disconnected we are from nature. Um, so I really believe that finding back our way to a healthy connection to healthy sexuality brings us back to our nature and, and, I really believe that in our nature, in our purest essence, we are loving beings. And yeah, I I feel that when we go on that journey of healing, whatever is in the way for that um, around sexuality, uh, like I said, it's it's shedding light on all these parts. And so it's also shedding lights on, um, yeah, certain unconscious patterns or belief systems that you have that are running the show until you become aware of them (laughs) and so becoming more and more aware also changes the way like it it gives you an opportunity to to stand still and 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 think okay is this actually how I want to act is this how I want to feel is this how I really want to think and then when that comes to the light you have a chance to change it and then you start to change the way you think and act and feel and that changes the way you relate to people and then that changes the way you you connect to people and you connect to the earth and, and mother nature. And then I believe that we really, I really believe that then we, we become better humans for ourselves and for each other and for the planet. Yeah. It's, it's just returning back to nature and our nature. I I say that too. I just say that, that every, that every aspect of ourselves from you know education to business, to relationships, to, money to our relationship with food like just to everything that you know as soon as we shift our relationship out of that destructive just destructive and destructive uh kind of nature back to our connection for self like you can't you can't actually cause harm to somebody else when we feel connected to them it's you know we 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 just can't do that when we're when we're not separate anymore what I would like to add as well is that, as you mentioned somewhere before as well, it's when we speak about uh, sexuality in this case, for me, it's not about or not only about the act of sex, but it's about this connection to this energy within us, this life force. Also, that is really beautiful from certain Taoist or Tantric practices is that the learning to to separate the, the sexual energy from uh, the actual act of sex or orgasm and learning to use this energy as your creation force and when you are deeply tapped into your your essence and your nature then you are going to use start to use that creation force for as a fuel for for anything that you're here to do no that you really want to bring forward from from your essence and so it becomes this yeah this fuel to to help you create or birth the things into the world that you're meant to birth here so yeah just also to still clarify we're not just speaking about this like the sexual part with yourself or or with your partner which is also definitely a part of it uh, which when that's going well I also believe that influences all parts of our lives and we just feel better we're better humans (laughs) but yeah that energy is so much more it's it's really it's really the fuel for everything if we learn to use it that way. And in fact, from my understanding, and that you know, if if people are still functioning from that like ad- addictive kind of you know more physical shallow aspect of just needing to have sex all the time in the addictive style, that's that's actually very draining on the body. It's really mm-hmm. like draining the life force out of the body when you're practicing that just like too much. You know, when it when it's out of balance. And yes. so, you know, I, I, I understand what it's, what it's like to have so much energy, you're kind of bouncing off the walls, but to not have anything to channel it into. So, you know, to me, part of it is being, is being able to, to, to center, you've come to the point of centering and balance of, of being able to center yourself so that you do have funnels of that energy that aren't just a quick release, you know, all of the time. There's a time and a place for everything. We're definitely out of balance at the moment, I feel. So how does how does your work actually shift people's relationship to sexuality and to their bodies? Well, very often what I see is, um, yeah, also as I mentioned, is this really feeling through the body 
the sacredness of this energy and the power of this energy. And it's rewriting a story in a way very often because in the sessions, how I offer them, it's both the pelvic release and the tantric body work. They're both really just for the receiver. So in that sense, like it, I'm just there guiding them in a journey through their own bodies. And also there, that's already a different experience because a lot of the times when people think about sexuality or sexual energy, it's very much often linked to someone else or in interaction with someone else or with a fantasy or with porn or, you know, so having this experience just for themselves through their own body and just feeling their own body and opening the whole body and the sensations. And it just, it just becomes this whole journey and this whole world that can really open up to people um, of how much an, of an experience, how much of a deep journey you can have just by <laughs> going into the body uh, and slowing down and really feeling, uh, feeling the deeper layers under the skin. Yeah. And then feeling that you have the capacity to, to meet yourself and to hold yourself through whatever is there is often very empowering for people as well. So they can have this experience of going through maybe like a big energy wave or maybe like a, an emotional release or, or memories coming back and actually having, yes, I'm there to support and to guide, but actually feeling the bedding within themselves that they can can hold themselves through that and yeah the way that you can feel when you're deeply in the body is just something that became very rare <laughs> uh in our in our society very often so even even that like it's again that seems very simple but really like landing into the body and feeling the whole body and being in the body is is very much a, a big eye-opener for a lot of people I've got a lot of yeah. mosquitoes that are really wanting to connect with my body right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I want a bite of that. <laughs> and before you mentioned uh, like connecting to the breath, um, is there any particular, you know, practices or, or something that you would recommend for people as maybe a starting point of something that they can do to improve their own experience? Uh, again, very simple, I would say, starting, for example, just placing a hand on your lower belly, uh, or even you could place a lower a hand on your genitals, if mm -hmm. that feels acceptable for sometimes for people that feels like a big step. So you can already just placing a hand on your lower belly and starting to breathe towards that hand. So that already invites you to drop deeper into your body and into your pelvis. Um, because the pelvis is where the, the source of the energy is of this the life force energy so we want to start to make that connection and drop into the body and what really helps me to to go deeper inwards is imagining as if I'm touching so let's say I have my hand on my lower belly uh, and that I travel inwards and I touch the hand from the inside out so starting to imagine that really helps me to drop into the body and feel like rever reversing the touch from mm -hmm. outside to inside, from inside to outside. So that's one super simple way to just start to drop your awareness. And what really helps me sometimes to really feel the energy or feel my body, feel my pelvis is to kind of gently rock, start to rock my pelvis as I breathe. So like mm -hmm. rocking to the front yeah. when you breathe in and rocking to the back when you breathe out. And even this, this hand and this movement already really starts to help you to drop into the pelvis and mm. and connecting to this energy um i like this and then, that you really use it at the start of kundalini yoga you know to, yeah to rock the belly and it, it really wakes up the spine mm. yes exactly because mm. that's what it's about as well in these practices then there are further practices or more advanced practices that you would learn to move the energy from the lower chakras up to the higher chakras mm. So from the pelvis towards the belly and the heart and the throat and, and so awakening all the centers. And what you want for that, what is very helpful for that is that the body is kind of open and also the spine is very much uh, important in that, that the spine is flexible. And so already starting to move a little bit, the body and the spine is like going to help the energy to move as well. So I would invite that, you know, maybe a really nice practice is just before making any decisions or taking any action to just simply come into the body for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute or something like that 
and just with yeah. that deep presence and then and then go, okay, now what? <laughs> yes, you know, totally. Just, just yeah, little... and you could even then um, take a time to like drop in the pelvis first and then maybe also placing a hand on your heart. And mm-hmm. so, and yeah, like you say, taking, even if it's a minute, dropping into the pelvis, then the heart and then some breath into your mind into your brain so then you're connecting pelvis heart and mind all together and and that's a really beautiful way to have them working together mm, definitely beautiful. if you need to make a decision or yeah and so maybe would you like to share you've got some beautiful events coming up including your return to the inner temple um self pelvic yeah. release course would you like to share a, a bit about that yes i would love to <laughs> Um, so, um, pelvic release. So maybe just to very shortly explain is a technique to, well, like it says, uh, release the tissue from the pelvis and the pelvis and the genitals. And this is to really physically free the body from any tension or stored traumas or emotions. And even just, you know, to increase the sensitivity, the pleasure potentials. So really, it's something that I believe everyone can benefit from, uh, men and women. Uh, but this course that I'm uh, hosting soon is for women. So this is something you can go to a practitioner for. Uh, but a lot of the things you can also do yourself. So there are very simple techniques that you can learn to do by yourself at home. So I created a course for that uh, where I'm going to teach these practices. So very practically, the the, pract- the techniques to release the pelvis and the genital area from uh, tension and whatever is stored there by touch. So outer and inner release, but also teach about the nervous system because that's also a very important part in this work is our nervous system and how that plays a role in how we feel and how we can connect to our bodies. So I teach about that and also some practices to help you to relax your nervous system, which is very much needed in this work because it can bring up a lot. So it's very important to have, like I said, a toolbox to be able to regulate yourself if there's things coming up. If, yeah, if you meet some some chunky bits, as you said, or some challenging things, uh, or even if there's a lot of energy moving through you to be able to center yourself is very important. And also some other Taoist and Tantric practices to connect to your really your feminine energy, your body. Also the heart and the breasts are a part of uh, of this work. So we really incorporate a lot of the rest of the body as well, but the focus is on the pelvis. I know it's a very sensitive topic. So um, yeah, first of all, to create an, a safe space as possible for me is priority. Some of the practices that are done, of course, especially the pelvic release by itself, we will have the cameras off and, you know, you really be in your own space. I'm just going to teach you how to do it and guide you through the practices as you do it in your own safe space. And this is something I've been working with over the past few years myself and, and still work with a lot and has helped me so much to have these tools myself. And to, to have this as a practice for myself, to to connect to myself, to release my pelvis, to bring a deeper connection to that area, that part of my body, and really get to know myself. I also teach about the anatomy of the pelvis, inner and outer, which also many women haven't learned. So, yeah, also to even get to know how actually... Yeah, does it work inside and, and what the anatomy and to really understand this part of your body, I believe, really contributes to to wholeness <laughs> in yourself. So, yeah, that's what we're, we're going to do. And it's a four week course. So we'll have a live call every Wednesday at 8 p.m. I'm in Amsterdam time zone. And there will be replays and um, yeah, and a support group throughout to just share or ask questions. Yeah. And it starts on the 9th of October. Beautiful. It's such important work and it feels like, you know, we're, we're holding so much collective and generational trauma, like just yeah hundreds thousands of years and there's Mm -hmm. so many areas that I feel like we're breaking all of the trauma chains from our ancestry and from the collective and you know I think the work that you're doing is so beautiful and you know it really (laughs) it's very very needed at the moment so yeah yes and and it's yeah like you say like we can hold all these things that are not even ours and still influence us and building a relationship with that 
part helps you to release it and also helps you to understand more of who am I and what do I want and what does my body want. And I found that to be so helpful in my journey around intimacy and sexuality as well with partners is knowing my own body and knowing what feels good and what doesn't feel good and what I want and what I don't want. Mm -hmm. And then learning to speak that because that's really a topic for women is so many times we've allowed things to happen or had experiences or or maybe did things that weren't actually in fully alignment with our bodies and to have that as um, yeah strengthening that uh, to speak out also what what you want what you don't want your boundaries or desires is is very very powerful yeah yeah and and that mm-hmm. and that is powerful not just in the bedroom but out in the big wide world yes. as well you know they all okay. definitely relate to each other don't they yes yes completely beautiful yeah. so sophia how can people connect with you if they'd like to to do some work with you or uh, find out some more information yes they can find my instagram it's uh, at sophia and then two underscores and then shakina it's S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H. And otherwise, it's my website, sophiashekina.com. And also, I'm running retreats in Egypt uh, together with my beautiful co-host, Luisa, and this time also with you, Joni, because we have a special... Right team. here. Yeah. Upstairs. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a women's retreat. Um, so, yeah, it's not specifically around sexuality but definitely practices that help you to tap into your feminine nature and and strengthen that as well and then alongside that uh, program we have a teen retreat running so we offer the opportunity for for mothers with teens to join us and to Mm -hmm. have the women's retreat with us while their teenagers having a program with you with, with me mm-hmm. yes beautiful. they're going to be doing beautiful connecting rite of passage work through create creative and wellness kind of practices it's going to be so much fun yeah people can connect of course uh the the body work part i work in person but also i work in online mentorships with people so i can really teach them practices that you can do yourself so that's also possible in the online realms to work with me so yes amazing um, yes. that's gorgeous thank you so much for sharing all your wonderful offerings with us today mm. um is there anything else that you'd like to share before we go yeah i just want to thank you for the opportunity and for this beautiful chat and to help spread this this important work yeah i really yeah, if, if really, if you feel this is somehow speaking to you, but you don't know where to start and the examples we gave maybe still feel a little bit vague, like really don't hesitate to reach out. I'm, I'm happy to, to give some insights or ideas or support. And um, yeah, I really believe that, that this is going to, you know, help more people dropping into the bodies and, and finding their center and their, their true nature. And yeah, happy to support in that. Amazing, beautiful. And I look forward to, to joining in your online course in October. I think that will be, feels like it will be very transformative. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. Uh, and you're there. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, so, you much so much for all the beautiful work that you're doing, Sophia. Mm, you too. Thank you. <laughs> and please, everybody, if you'd like to uh, tune into more conversations like this, please like and subscribe. You know the drill. So until next time, my friends, be well and keep dreaming a good dream. Ciao.